Welcome back to Nuts and Bolts Torqued. I had a bit of a disaster, actually kind of a double disaster, uh, doing the prep for this episode. The first disaster was that um, if you've ever programmed and you've ever done stuff in a terminal window, just like a, a text window basically where you can enter commands using your keyboard, if you've ever done that then you know that the slash clear will basically always just clear all the text out of the window. Well. I wanted to see if that would work in this window, because there's just a bunch of spammy text here. And I did slash clear. Don't do that ever. Do not do slash clear. What that does in this game, with whatever mod is, is using that command, I don't know which one, it clears out your entire inventory. I deleted my inventory. Whoops. Yeah, I tried to instantly close the process of the game so that it wouldn't save those changes, but it somehow managed to save them anyway, so I ended up having to go to a backup of the game, an older version, where I hadn't quite fully constructed the the uh, crusher up there, so I had to redo a bunch of progress. That's why you see all these. These are me cheating in ingredients to get me back to where I was before. Yeah, so that wasn't too good, and the other problem is that the game kept constantly crashing, and I couldn't load into it. <laughs> but anyway, I solved both problems. We're good. Let's continue. Take a deep breath. <sighs> so what I want to get into today is Batania. It's time to finally do it. The one thing that was holding me back was getting the rose... what was it? Rose gold? Rose ingot? Rose gold ingot. Yeah, in the metal alloy. And I couldn't get the right type of copper dust to get this thing going. Which is one of the reasons I wanted to make the crusher. There were other ways to get the copper dust, but I needed to make the crusher anyway. So it kind of solves two problems at the same time. So using that copper dust plus the silver and gold dust, I should be able to make some rose gold ingots, which will allow me to make one of the things that I absolutely have to make to really get going in Patania. So let me get these together and see if I can alloy it. There we go. That should do it. All right, they're all in there. Let's hope it makes the right thing. Yes, we have rose gold ingots. All right, we are set. So I've got a couple things prepped for some of the Batania basics. One of the first things I'm gonna have to make, not the first thing, but one of the first things is the Petal Apothecary. I've already got all the stuff for it, some quartz slabs, some temple blocks, I hadn't made those before, but they're just cyan dye and stone. The aquamarine, which comes from the astral sorcery places in the chests. The one thing we don't have is the mystical white petal. To get that, we're going to need to get the Batania flowers. And I'm going to need the flowers just for all sorts of stuff in Batania, so I figure I might as well just get all of them. Uh, normally those flowers will spawn wild, but the mod packs disabled that, so the only way to get them is using the floral fertilizer. Which, I do have everything to get a bunch of that. So bone meal, ash piles, which means you need embers. Or actually, there's also an alternative way of getting ash piles, but embers is the best way. And then a bunch of colorings and the chimerite. That makes a whole bunch of the stuff, and this stuff just instantly sprouts flowers wherever you use it. So. Yeah, and those are Britannia flowers. So I'm just going to use a crap ton of these. I'm going to use all of the floral fertilizer and just grab all the flowers. Alright, so I've got a crap ton of flowers. Um, now I need to make... Is it the pure daisy? Do I have to make that? I forgot. Yeah, okay. So I need to make the pure daisy, but before that I need to make the petal apothecary. So you can take any plant and just turn it into its petals, which I might as well do for all of these. Because I don't think they have any use as just their original form. Got them all. Lots of pretty petals. Let's make the petal apothecary. Um, I'm trying to think if I should make a like special Batania spot before or after. Hmm. Let's do it before. Let me let me find an area. I'm going to clear out an area just right over here, pretty close to the base so I don't have to go too far to get crafting ingredients and stuff. 
So I'm imagining a place that looks pretty natural. Which is kind of ironic because I'm kind of clearing out trees and stuff and breaking a bunch of the vegetation to make this area. But I want it to look kind of natural because Batania is all about nature and, and magic and petals and flowers and things like that. So I want it to be very green and vegetative. So I think I'm going to try maybe making it look a bit overgrown. I think I'm going to shear some leaves off of trees and place them around to look kind of like bushes. And maybe some flowers too, possibly. Here we go. Got a sort of overgrown sort of ring around this place. I don't know if I love it, but eh, I think it looks pretty cool. It's kind of like a secret secluded garden. It's like so much nature magic happens here that stuff has just grown up around it. And it'll look better once this all turns into grass. And I also think I'm going to do something extra to... Um, oh, I forgot to grab the petals. One sec. So if you use the petals on the ground, you get these little sparkly bits. And then if you use bone meal on the sparkly bits, it turns into... Uh, not just a flower of the same type as what you put in the ground, but it turns into an extra tall one. And if you cut that using shears, you can actually get an extra uh, double amount of leaves from it. Of petals, rather. I think that looks pretty cool. The only problem is I am definitely going to outgrow this at some point. Definitely not in today's episode, but uh, when I start getting some of the later game Batania stuff, opening portals to other dimensions and stuff, uh, it's definitely not going to fit here. But we'll deal with that later. I've also got a chest here that I'm going to throw all my Batania stuff into that I don't need. Alright, let's put the Petal Apothecary right here. So the way the Petal Apothecary works is you fill it with water, and then you dump in whatever you need to make your recipe. In this case, I'm trying to make... Oh, um... Where's my Lexica Batania book? Oh, I think I lost that. Let me just cheat that back real quick. Set J-E-I to cheat. Uh, Lexica Batania. I will take one of those, please. Thank you. So this is the book for Batania. Ah, it's under Basics and Mechanics. So we're trying to make the Pure Daisy. This is required to make some of the things that we need for pretty much everything in Batania. And for that, it tells you the recipe. You can also look this up in the recipe search. So if we go through here, Pure Daisy, you can see with the Petal Apothecary, it is four mystical white petals. So fill it up with water, put in what it requests, four of these. You can actually see them floating in there. And then to finish it, you have to drop in seeds. And there you go. And you get the end result. In this case, pure daisy. So what the pure daisy does is it allows you to make living wood and living rock. I just made another pure daisy. Definitely going to want two. So the way this works is if you place down either the logs of wood logs directly around one of the flowers or stone in whatever combination you want it'll turn into the equivalent living thing so this this wood when placed directly around this will become living wood takes a bit of time and the stone directly around this other one will become living stone or living rock and if we give these about a minute they should transform Ah, all right. So after just sitting and watching those for a while, I, I figured maybe they had changed the... Uh, maybe the mod pack had changed it so it took longer for them to convert to the living wood and living rock, but no. I finally just checked, and they actually just switched the items that you need to to put down next to the pure daisies. So instead of stone and wood, it's actually marble and witch wood. So I just got... The witch wood I already had a little bit of from a long time ago. I cut down one witch wood tree on top of, I think, a mountain or something. So I've just got a little bit of that. Seems quite rare, so I'm a little bit worried if I need a bunch of that. Hopefully I won't. Uh, and the marble is just from Astral Sorcery, so you can just go to one of those little places and just take the marble from it. So I'm going to put those down in just a sec, but while I'm doing that, I also want to automate filling up the Petal Apothecary. So having to go get a bucket of water and fill it up every single time you want to make a flower is pretty annoying. So I should be able to solve that using a combination of an Aqueous Accumulator going to be our third one. A fluid tank and the mechanical user that I made a long time ago and was never able to use. 
Now the reason I have to do something different to fill that with water instead of just having an aqueous accumulator and just hooking up a pipe straight from that to the pill apothecary is it won't fill up using a pipe. No, the only way, as far as I can tell, the only way I know of to fill up the pedal apothecary is to basically right click on it with a bucket. And just hooking up a tube to it doesn't simulate that. However, the mechanical user should be able to simulate an actual person right clicking on it. I've done this before using slightly different tools, so this should work. Next bike. And while we're working on that, let's get these going. Uh, it needs to be which would planks, thankfully, not the actual raw logs, so get a bit more out of them than, than we otherwise would. Oh, wow. The mod pack actually changed it so they transform instantly. Well, that's cool. Uh, yeah, normally that takes a full minute. Okay. Well, while we are not waiting for that, Let's automate this thing. Zombie. The real trick is going to be making this all underground and it and just like totally hidden. That's going to be a little bit tricky. So I'm going to need the mechanical user underneath this. Um. Wait, is this point? If you place it this way, it faces towards you? Hmm. Yeah, it faces towards you. Well, that's inconvenient. I want it to face up towards this thing, so... Uh, I guess I'm gonna have to break it. Put something here. And then put it like that. Alright, now it's facing it. Um, and then we're going to need the fluid tank. So we're going to end up filling the fluid tank with water. We're going to want it to push and pull towards the mechanical user. And I'll explain why in just a minute. And now we need to fill that fluid tank up using the aqueous accumulator. So... Should be able to put the aqueous accumulator right. Uh, let me put the water down first. Water back there. Accumulator. And water. Filling up. Yes. No. Why did it stop? Oh, it might be because the water's flowing now. I might need to stop it from flowing. Uh, let me see. Does it work now? No? What? Oh, wait. Is it? It's filling up the tank, isn't it? Oh, it is. <laughs> okay, never mind. That's why. Okay, so that's all working. Actually, I, I think I might have just practically finished it. So now I think the only thing I have to do... Let me set up the mechanical user first. So, always on. We want right-click, generic click, yes. Upper left slot only, yes. Okay, so what should happen when I place this bucket in the upper left left slot um, is because this thing is set on push and pull, what it should do is take the empty bucket into its inventory, put it here. Uh, actually, no, I won't put it in just because I don't want the whole thing to go yet. It should take the empty bucket, it should pull it from the mechanical user, put it here, fill it with water, and because it's push and pull, it should then try to push it back into here. And it shouldn't try to take it back until it's empty. I don't know why it doesn't take it back until it's empty, but that's how it behaves, and it's very good that it does, because that makes it a lot more useful. Otherwise, it would just, like, flip back and forth between the two things. So yeah, when I place this in here... Whoa! What the fuck? Uh... <laughs> what? Huh? How did that happen? It's not... It's not placed... It's not right-clicking the pedal apothecary. It's right-clicking above it?
Okay, stop. Does it reach two blocks? So if I put this here and then put the Petal Apothecary on top of it, is it going to work? Is this some sort of like... Hmm... I get the feeling this is some like anti-cheat thing. I mean, I don't consider this a cheat in any way, but I feel like there's code in Batania that's like specifically stopping this from working. It's just like messing with me. Oh, wait a minute. No, that... why did that end up there? Maybe it does pull it back. I don't understand why that's ending up there and not getting used. Place block. Oh no! I was on generic click. I want use item on block. Okay, that'll work. Oh, okay. Yeah, this will be okay. It's getting stuck in here, isn't it? Why is it doing that when it wasn't doing it before? Ah, uh, okay. I got it working. Yeah, so I guess I forgot a couple little tricks that you have to do with this. So it, it does, it isn't like super intelligent or whatever, and it avoids taking the water bucket back in. It does, so you actually need two buckets. You need a water bucket here, just as like a placeholder to make sure that nothing else can go there. I guess. Um, and then we need the water bucket that actually goes inside of here. And also, it should not be set on... Oops. It should not be set on use item on block. Instead, it should be activate block with item. I have no idea what the difference is, but yeah, that's what it has to be. And that should do it. Ugh. So let me clean up this mess. Trash should cover that quite soon, and then... It'll look as if nothing was there at all. However, place it on top. Instantly gets filled. Almost instantly. Pretty sweet, huh? Yeah, that makes your life a lot easier. Okay, let's grab this living rock and living wood and make some other stuff. All right, I've got a whole bunch of living rock and living wood. So the first thing we're going to want to make is using living wood. going to make three living wood twigs. And then if you put those like this, along with two petals, you make the Wand of the Forest, which is basically your wrench for the mod. Very, very important. You can't really do much without it. Um, we are also going to need a mana pool. Ah... Right, that was the complex one. I'm going to need some external stuff from my main crafting place. Alright, I'll be right back. Alright, we've got everything ready here for the mana pool, except one thing. We've got the living rock. I'm going to make two batches of this, by the way. And we have the chimerite block, which is just the chimerite put in the compressor. But we're missing the mana focus. And that has a lot of crafting steps to it. First, we need a couple pieces of mana glass. Just glass and vintium dust, which is just vintium ore put through the crusher. We put that in between the rose gold ingots that we made in the alloy thing to make two lesser focuses. And then I believe we surround that with redstone, yep, to make standard focuses. And then I think we surround that other direction. Yeah, surround that with even more Vintium dust to make mana focuses. Or foci, I guess. And there we go. Four mana pools. We're also going to need a mana spreader. I haven't looked at the recipe for that. Oh. Everything needs a mana focus. Alright. Got them made. So let's make two mana spreaders. 
So, oh, I guess I haven't explained yet. The uh, mana is basically the power system of Batania. And generating flowers. So let's get the Lexica Batania out here. There's two main types of flowers. There's generating flora and functional flora. Functional flora, well, does something such as picking up items or hurting enemies or some other function like that. And generating flora make mana. They make power. That is then used by all sorts of different things, including many of the functional flora. Not all of the flora. Not all, not all of the functional flora require mana, but some do, or some will be boosted in some way by mana. So, generating flora. I'm pretty sure before we can make any of the others, we have to start with the endo flame. Uh, because I think most likely all of the other generating flora require runes, and we can't make runes until we have mana in the first place. And we use generating flora to make the mana, so we need a type of flower that doesn't require any runes. Which is the endoflame. Just requires some petals. So the endoflame will take anything that can be burned, such as wood or coal, and it'll turn it into mana. It'll eat it. And I'm going to make probably quite a few of these, because I don't want to wait around for 50 years waiting for mana to be generated. I'm just going to just get enough mana from the endoflames to make flowers that are much, much better at generating mana. So, let's make it two brown, light gray, and red. Two brown, light gray, and red. Now, I think there's a little shortcut on doing this a bunch of times so that you don't have to manually do it each time. But we have to do it once to begin with. Okay, and then I believe if you right-click on this with an empty hand, yeah, it puts everything back in except for the end seed. So you can just do right-click, seed, right-click, seed, Right click. Get one more. Seven. Abnormal number. There we go. So if we combine that with the mana spreader and the mana pool, you can probably guess what those do. Now I'll just put the mana pool right here. I don't think we're going to need these pure daisies for a bit, so I'm just going to pop them off. So the mana pool is basically the battery, it stores mana. The mana spreader is what you need, it's basically the transmission lines, it's what you need to transport mana from generating flora to the mana pool, or from the mana pool to something that needs mana. So, if we put these down, these are mana spreaders, they're, by default they don't really point towards anything in particular. To make them point towards something, we're going to need to use the wand. So if we sneak right click on that, um, sneak right sneak right click on that and then sneak right click on the thing you want it to aim towards, and it'll aim towards it. You see it like shooting, it's not actually shooting anything, that's just showing you basically where the, the beam will shoot. So now they're both pointing towards the mana pool. And then let's put these endo flames down. Put four on that side, four on this side. Now, if you mouse over each Endoflame, you can see there's a, a little mana spreader icon, like right here, with a check mark. That means it has found a mana spreader to connect to. So any mana that this Endoflame generates, you can see it's highlighting that mana spreader right there. Any mana that it generates will be sent to that mana spreader, and then the mana spreader will send it to the pool. And these are connected to the other one. By default, flowers will connect to the closest mana spreader next to them. So that's why I put down the mana spreaders first, because it just makes it faster, because all the flowers will automatically connect to the closest one. If you do it the other way around, then you'll just have to manually assign each end of flame to the mana spreader. Now it's all ready to generate mana. Let's put something down that can burn. I think I've got a bunch of wood here that I can't use. No, I stored it away. Well, I could burn my chests, or I could actually go get something proper. Okay, I've got a 39 coal. Let's just drop it and let us suck it up. And there we go. We have mana. If you right-click on the mana spreader, every time you right-click it, it'll update the, uh, the mana bar. If you don't click anything, then it just won't give you any information. So if you hold it down, you can see how much mana is in it. And as you can see, it's going up. And then once it reaches a certain threshold, it sends a mana pulse. And that's what's going on right there. That's the mana pulse transferring the mana from the spreader to the pool. So it hits the threshold and then sends it. You can also see a similar thing on these things. Uh, oh, it looks like they've sent all their mana, so 
I'm actually just... I'll just drop all of this. So, let him pick it up for a second. Um, oh, it looks like they're sending it out at a fast enough rate. Yeah, so the buffer of the end of flames are not filling up because the mana spreader is more than capable of taking all of the mana that they generate. So that's why we don't see their own buffer. But if for some reason, if we had so many end of flames that the mana spreader couldn't actually send enough mana pulses to get rid of all of it, then we'd see the buffers and the end of flames themselves going up. So everything's got a buffer. The end of flames have a buffer, mana spreaders have a buffer, and of course the mana pool has its own buffer. A very large one, by the way. It takes a long, long time to fill up a mana pool. You can see the bar's got, like, a pixel in it. Yeah, little mana goes a long way. And we're gonna want quite a bit of mana to start with. Not a huge amount, but a bit. So what we're going to need, if we want to make the other flowers, I'm gonna be making the, what is it, the Gormialis? Gormorillus? Gormorillus? Basically, it eats food and generates mana. It is incredibly efficient, especially compared to the Endo Flames. Especially with all the really high nutrition food that we can make with Pam's Harvest Graft. So, to make that, we are going to need the Rune of Summer and the Rune of Fire. To make the runes, we're going to need mana, and we're also going to need the Runic Altar. Haven't looked at what that takes. Let me guess it takes a mana focus. What the hell is that? Huh. Well. I think we have to get into both Astral Sorcery and Blood Magic first. We have to <laughs> we have to get into two other magic mods before I can actually make a runic altar. Oh my god. Oh man. Okay, so we're not making any better generating flora, but that's okay. That's fine, we're not going to get that far in Batania, but we don't have to get that far. Really, the main thing I want to do with Batania is make three Mana Steel Ingots. And then... We'll be able to make the Tool Forge. I've got, or can make, everything else. I don't have the Iron on me. Let me see, we might actually already have enough mana to make the Mana Steel. There we go. I just turned down the endo flame sound. It was extremely loud every time it consumed a bit of wood. Ah, oh, much better now. Alright, let's see if this is enough mana. So you just drop the iron ingots in the mana pool. Is that seriously not enough mana for even one? Oh no, that's right! Never mind, never mind, everything's okay. I forgot, Man of Steel in this mod pack is actually made from steel, not iron. Normally you make Man of Steel just from iron. Okay, I was freaked out for a second there. I thought maybe I'd have to generate tons of mana. Oh, <laughs> there we go. Three Man of Steel ingots. Yeah, that didn't take much mana at all. Well, we can make a tool forge. Let's get to it. So to make the dense steel plates that I need for the tool forge, I need a bit more steel. And I just went to check my whole system. Um, and the coke oven is already very, very filled up with creosote oil. So I need a little bit of a system to just suck this out so it can keep processing coal. And for now, I think I'm just going to put a fluid transfer node going to a bunch of fluid tanks. Just for now, I'll make a much bigger storage solution at some point. Let's go... This will suck it out, right? Yes. Yeah, that's fine. And I should probably make sure it doesn't connect back to it. I don't know if it's actually possible for it to flow back into the machine. Probably not. But just in case. Alright. I should suck it out. Yeah. Alright, great. So I've got to wait for this thing to finish processing a block of iron. Possibly two blocks. Okay, I think I've got everything together. I made the dense steel plates. Just 
nine um, nine normal steel plates in the compressor for each dense steel plate. Got my block of night slime that I made a while ago in that lost episode, so you never saw how I made this, but yep, I made it. Block of aluminum brass, which is an alloy of aluminum and a little bit of copper. Got the mana steel. Only other thing I need is the tool station. So the old tool, sta tool station is going to be replaced with a better one. Can do everything the previous one can do and more. There it is. Oh. Hello. So, some new stuff I can make. A lot, a lot of new stuff. I can make a better sword. I can make the excavator, which is the 3x3 three three shovel. I can make the hammer, which is the 3x3 three three pickaxe. And where's that special... There it is, the lumber axe. Can fell entire trees in one swoop. Or gather wood in a wide range. So I'm going to make all these things. I'm going to make these super versions. These 3x3 three three versions of my basic tools. Plus, I'm going to make the cleaver, which is just a really, really big sword. To prep for making all the tools, I just went to the nether and got a whole bunch of cobalt, because I was almost out, and some more ardite. I think I had a good amount of ardite, but yeah, might as well get it while it's available. And the efficiency of this is going to be doubled, because now I can throw it in the crusher and get double the yield out of it, rather than just directly throwing it into the smeltery and only getting one ingot per ore, I can get two. Now, since I'm going to be processing a bunch of ores, I think it's time that I finally make this a proper 3x3. It's really small. It's got very few slots and it doesn't hold much. There we go. Remade the whole thing. I actually went bigger than 3x3. I went 3x4. Now we actually have a scroll bar for all the things we can fit inside of it. Capacity 192 ingots. Nice. And because of the larger size, I can now fit three working drains on one side instead of just two. So let's go see just how much stuff I can put in there. So I processed out the cobalt. Where are you? Well, there's the art date. Oh, there's the cobalt. I wasn't expect. Yeah, I was expecting it to look blue. Odd. So let's melt a whole bunch of it. It should melt pretty much instantly. Oh no, huh. Yeah, strange. Usually if you put the other like normal types of dusts in there, iron dust, copper dust, it melts almost instantly, but not cobalt. Well, anyway, that gives me some time to prep all the stuff I need for the tools. So these tools require a lot more materials than the normal things I've made, and also totally different types. It's not just a binding and a tool rod and some sort of a head. It's like these plates and whatever the heck these things are and um, all sorts of different things. So let me prep all the stencils for these. Okay, I think I have everything I need to make all four tools, or I guess three tools and one weapon. So let's do the tools first. First one, we got the hammer. Cobalt hammer. Lightweight, momentum. Mining speed 4.8. I don't think that's very good. Yeah, so the mining speed is slower, but again, it's in a 3x3 three three pattern, so... I'm sure it comes out to being way, way faster. Not to mention, of course, I can upgrade it with redstone and stuff. Now, let's make the excavator. Now the lumber axe. Oh, I'm missing a part, aren't I? Yeah, whoops, I'm missing a rod. Easy fix. Well, while we're waiting for that, let's make the sword. So broadsword, using manulin, mix of ardite and cobalt, since that's much better for damage. Cobalt's for speed, manulin's for damage. Manulin Cleaver. 18, just by default, 18.2 attack damage. Compared to 12.05. So 
So with no upgrades whatsoever, it does way more damage. And it also has beheading too, just by default. Which means there's a greater chance of getting the head of whatever mob you're killing. Alright, now let's make that lumber axe. All right, let's try them out. So let's let's swap these. So this should take out an entire tree. I've never actually used a lumber axe, by the way. In fact, I've actually never used any of these three tools. I've only used the cleaver before. I don't want to take out one of these beautiful trees that make up my forest. Don't I have some? Yeah, I have some oak I planted over here. Let's see if it's able to get all those weird bits of wood kind of like off to the side. Oh my god, that's beautiful! It did! Look at that! Oh my god! Oh, I missed one piece. That's alright. Make that two pieces. This thing's amazing! That was so much faster. Alright, well that I love. Yeah, I got two full stacks of wood for like five seconds of work. Cool. Alright, excavator. I'm gonna make sure I don't ruin my beach with this. Um, uh, I'll do this. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, beautiful. All right, hammer. Let's do some mass mining. Actually, you know what? Let's speed the hammer up a bit. Because I just processed a ton of redstone in the crusher. So I don't mind spending a couple stacks. The hammer's probably the one I'm going to use most because I'm going to use that for mining. So we've got three modifiers right now. So that changes the speed from 4.8 to 7.02. Let's throw another one on. So now it's up to 8.81. Yeah, so already it's like doubled. Uh, I'm going to leave one modifier open just in case I want to put a emerald on it to increase the durability. Yeah, that'll increase the durability by 50%. Right now it's got 2,000, so that'll give it another 1,000 durability. Pretty important, especially keeping in mind, since it is a 3x3 pattern, that's 9 blocks of durability, 9 bits of durability gone with every kind of whack, I guess. So durability is going to be extra important, I think. Let's go test this thing out. I've got a little hole over here that I use when I need some stone. I still haven't made that cobble generator. Okay. Show me what you're made of. <laughs> Look at that. Oh my god, this is gonna make mining so much easier. It's beautiful! I'm so happy with these tools. Okay, let's go try out our cleaver. Oh, and yeah, look at that. Just from that mining, durability has already gone down to... 1,760 out of 2,000. So definitely want to improve the durability. Hmm. Looks like there's a skeleton over this way. So a skeleton used to take, I think, two normal hits. Mm, still takes two hits. I should increase the damage because it got it down to like 9%. Wish it wasn't so dark here. How about somebody come, come out into the light? I see a zombie and a skeleton and a spider on the map. Hello! Hey. Oh. 
here. Yeah, it's so close to just one-shotting them. It's really good. If you notice, though, the speed is much slower. So every time you attack, you see that little bar, like right here, just right below the crosshair. That's basically the speed of the weapon. That's the recovery time. You can you can attack before that fully recovers. Uh, but it just does way, way, way less damage. So you really want to wait till that fully recovers before you swing again. And this one has probably like a full second and a half recovery time. Compared to this. Which is much faster. But that's perfectly fine. I'd much rather have this. Oh, are you not one of those? Oh, you're not one of the angry spiders. You're, you're, oh, never mind. Yep, so I think I'm going to sharpen this thing up with some quartz, make it do a bit more damage, and also give it some knockback. Especially because of the slow attack, it'd be, it'd be good to have knockback. Keep him away from me while you're waiting for it to regenerate. Alright, well I am super, super happy with what I've done this episode, just because of the tools alone. I can't wait to go mining. Also... There's something wrong with these dirt... bits. They will not, they absolutely refuse to turn into grass. I don't know why, I've destroyed them and I've replaced them, and they still won't turn into grass. It's been like this for, like, hours of in-game time. They just won't change. What if I just nuke all of it? There. That'll be an experiment. We'll see if it finally spreads to those two patches. Well, I think that's a pretty good place to end this episode, so I hope you've enjoyed so far. And I return. And I return. And when I return, I'm... Really not quite sure what I'm going to do, but once again, just like this episode, I'm sure it's going to be something fun.